a week or so back, we got a new development update. Tailworld spoke of the long-awaited modding tools that will be coming to Bannerlord very soon. And yes, it is very close now. Modders will have the ability to change pretty much every aspect of the game, to enhance their experience or even create new worlds, from maps, assets and textures, to even changing physics, seasonal changes and evolutions throughout the gameplay. But this year at Gamescom, the devs went even more in depth of Bannerlord's map editor. So let's take a closer look. Uh, today, as you might know, uh, we are going to talk about the scene editor. It's one of the fundamental tools about our modding tools that we are hoping to share with you all as soon as possible. And we are going to recreate one of the scenes that already exists in the game. Now from the get-go, I was aware that it was going to be more advanced than Warband's editor. The pain of loading up a single player world, taking the code from the map that you want to use, copying the files and then reloading back into Warband to start on the back-breaking act of creating custom maps in the old entry to the franchise. You'd be placing assets and editing textures and it was just one of the worst experiences in modding. But hey, look what we still had in Warband. We had smaller asset changes in campaigns like Blood in the West, or we had entirely new game modes created in Full Invasion 2. Even whole open worlds were made with in-depth crafting, resource collecting, government systems and clan kingdoms in persistent world. What was done in Warband was unprecedented really. The modding scene was beyond incredible for the tools we had, yet what you are about to see in Bannerlord will blow you away with how much freedom, choice and intricate details we're allowed to get in and mod to our heart's content. My mind can only run free with the possibilities that we're going to get in this next gen approach to community modding. First off, let's have a look at the map editor itself. The interface is welcoming, smart and intuitive. The aim was to create an editor that was accessible to new creators who have no idea what to do. All the way up to veteran modders creating whole new worlds out of the engine. Even someone that has never used an editor before can look at this and get a gist of what many of the icons mean and what they do, what functions they trigger and how to use them. I like to think of it as intricacy cloaked by simplicity. The ability to do certain things such as import textures and prints into the game itself, meaning that you can make the planning phase more intuitive and keep your map making as efficient as possible. We see here the option to import a blueprint that was previously designed with the outlines, walls, gates and where the creator wanted towers, spawns or even siege weaponry. This can also contribute to more of a collaboration effort. A team of modders could have someone working on the terrain, then someone working on the blueprints and designs for the castles and cities. That can then be sent to someone else who puts in the assets such as the walls, the towers, the castles, the houses and everything in between to the places that had already been designed from the blueprints by their other colleague. Transferring their ideas further on to someone that can go through and add in the more minute details and fixing any points of issues which we're going to get onto a bit later in the video. The possibilities with this are truly endless. It seems like Tailwords really love to go with the easy to learn, difficult to master approach. Anyone can pick this thing up, but if you really know what you're doing, it can be an incredibly powerful tool. Speaking of easy to use, the terraforming tools are something else. Setting up sizes of brushes, to densities, to textures and of course, colours. Not only does this work with placing down grass, rock, sand or any other terrain sort, but even trees. Whole forests can be created in seconds with the tools given. Changing the height of trees, species and even the chance to make everything pink, if that's more your thing. You can change any of these assets to any colour you want. So if you want to create a candy fairyland that contains all your childish desires, go ahead. Additionally, the option to hop in and micromanage every detail for even these brush tools themselves, setting filters to make it as quick or as slow and detailed as you want. Maybe you want rocks in the mountains but not in the valleys. Now of course, you could go through and paint rocks on the specific bits you want, it put some on there, rocks there, oh I've got a bit on the valley, oh no, gotta scrub that bit out. Or, you can just set a parameter that will only paint rocks above a certain height or degree of slope. Meaning you can liberally do broad brush strokes across the whole map and it will only place the texture you desire in the places you have chosen. 
Furthermore, Battlelords Map Editor gives you the option to import, of course, height maps and material maps. Smaller details like erosion maps can create a completely different but more realistic look with the click of a button, creating a world that feels aged and lived in. All terrain and foliage can be colour changed as I mentioned earlier. Maybe you just want a lighter grass in the steppes or darker green in the forest where it's damp and dingy. Or you just want blue grass, because why not? Bannerlord ain't gonna stop you. You can even create your own meshes that can be placed beyond the playable areas to create the illusion of rolling hills, forests or distant mountains. They can be custom made to your exact specifications or added from the presets the editor gives you from the get go. Let's get into the actual castle creation. All the assets that are in the game that you'll see throughout your single player and multiplayer can all be utilised and bent to your will in the map editor. Keeps, walls, crenellations, gates, houses, the list goes on and on. You're even able to place down siege weaponry and broken parts in the castles that are the best places for attackers to go and breach and make holes in the wall. You're able to bend assets in the game to your will. For example, if the wall isn't quite lining up, you're going to be able to bend and slightly morph it into place to make sure it's formed up with everything else, creating the perfect castle you had in your initial vision. There are so many tiny details that you can add, putting in small pebbles, rocks, putting in roots in trees, adding small barrels or baskets in houses or kitchens, you can even add bits of food and things lying everywhere, cutlery, everything that you can think of throughout the game. This can also be used in conjunction of adding in NPCs and AI that can of course be scripted as we were shown in the official release of Modern Tools development update from Tale Worlds. Pretty much all the objects can be changed with custom textures. Maybe you want to change the water into lava, or maybe you want a modern house instead of these medieval houses. You can see where I'm going with this. These can all be altered and changed within the editor itself. Additionally, all assets have physics that can be changed depending on how you want to use them. They can also be scripted with particle effects or even sounds, given the possibilities to create story-driven experiences or triggered events throughout the world itself. We've looked at a micro level though, but what about taking a step back? Seasons can be changed and added to your desire. Atmospheres can be changed depending on what mood you really want, whether you're fighting in the sun, sunset, or a storm. The snow is something that really stands out to me though and looks amazing. You can change all these seasons and it will affect the map. For example, if a village that you have made is growing farms in the spring, when you come back in the winter, it will all be harvested and gone. Speaking of dynamic editor functions, the game will also change as the castle is upgraded. Much like in single player where you can grow and change your castle, upgrading it to different tiers, the map editor can also upgrade between these tiers, and you're able to switch between them seamlessly. There are also civilian versions where you can walk around your map whenever you want, or just put it into siege mode. Here you're going to be able to see exactly what it would look like in the event of a siege, where all the towers are, where people will breach, where the walls are going to fall down. And because because of this, you're going to be able to have the same castle that you've created, but go through different looks and features, adding in different things depending on whether it's peacetime or an all out war. Now, trying to figure out exactly everything this editor does is not something that can be done in a single video. It doesn't matter though, if you're a long time veteran of map editing or someone that just wants to have a go at placing a few assets here and there. Tower Worlds have created a powerful modding function that can be used by anyone. I will just add that this hasn't even slightly scratched the surface of what we can get into with these modding tools, but Tower Worlds will be releasing tutorials of the more in-depth parts once they are out to the public. So I'm sure you're going to be able to learn whatever you need to then. But when can you get your hands on these modding tools? Well, as far as we know, they're going to be available in the next couple of weeks. So maybe even by the time you're watching this, we'll have these functions. Or maybe even real mods are starting to be created and released. I, for one, cannot wait to see all the creations that the Mountain Blade community come up with. I never realised how little we had in terms of modding tools in Warband until seeing what Bannerlord is bringing to the table. And it only excites me more for the future of the game. So make sure you stick around the channel, because you bet I will be bringing you videos on all the creations of the community, and maybe even the modding tools themselves. But until then, I will see you in the next one.